Hi, Rob again here from uh, Kickback Garage. Today I'm going to talk you through how to uh, make your own little uh, leak down test uh, for the Lambretta engine. It'll also work on uh, your Vespers out there. And uh, if you don't know what that is, then uh, I suggest that you grab yourself a cup of coffee and come back after the intro. And if you know what it is, then come back after the intro anyway. <laughs> Messing around with these cameras, batteries going flat. All sprung in log of villa come under talk. In your novice mac out to other forty frog for what to do or draw. Can we phone can a sudden come at the husband to cover so we are the brother last summer? With all two stroke motors, it's really important that they are pretty much airtight. Because if you've got uh, a leak and it's sucking in false air somewhere, then it'll affect the way that your jetting is, and worst case scenario, you can end up with something like this. Now this is a TS1 piston from, oh, it's about 10 years ago, I think, maybe more actually. But anyway, uh, what happened there was uh, the Lambretta just started uh, running faster and faster, better and better, it's never run uh, as good as it did, and then it was lights out. As you can see, I hold my piston. The problem with that for me here in Norway is if I do stupid things like that, then uh, the as I have mentioned on the other videos, uh, if we have the the equivalent to the AA uh, cover that you've got in the UK, then they'll then they'll just take you to the nearest garage or petrol station, and that really really doesn't help much. So uh, this particular time, I was in uh, on my way to Sweden. And it was 450 kilometers from home, so it was a lot of faffing about. I had to take the train home, and yeah, you name it. So it's very, very important that uh, those engines are uh, sealed up properly and working how they should be. So I'll take you to have a look at a uh, TS1 engine that I'm building at the moment, and uh, I'll show you how to set one up. Right, gents, this is my mate's uh, TS1 engine. Um, I know this runs really well, but uh, this was built last year, and uh, my main man Arne, he says that even though it's jetting up really, really rich, the uh, plug is white and it just sort of wants to run, run away with itself. Uh, it can't get the revs to settle down and and stuff like that. And if you've ever wondered, if you if you're gonna buy it or build a new engine then the first thing you do is uh, go on uh, Google and you check out what sort of jets other people are using like this is a standard TS1 with a JL and uh, he's running a TMX 30 carb so if you go if you go into the internet and Google that you'll get a whole myriad of uh, different jetting um, specifications that people have had and some people say they've been in a dyno and but it's the difference in like I saw for example on this one when I googled TS1 uh, with a TMX and a JL exhaust uh, people are running like anything from 300 to 310 main jet to like 450 now when you buy a, a motorbike they all sort of come off the production line with a standard jet so I reckon that the, one of the biggest reasons uh, for that not being the same on all uh, setups is basically that it's um, blowing out uh, air somewhere or sucking in air that it shouldn't be so it's not airtight and that really really messes with the jetting so uh, I told him to bring up the engine I'm going to do some other stuff on it as well and we decided uh, I'll do a leak down test. So what I'm using here is the same as on the SLUK uh, video. And it's basically one of these, I do not know how to pronounce it, spigomiometer. Spigomiometer. We'll call it that from now, that sounds good. But this is basically a blood pressure test with a little pumpy, pumpy thing. And Apart from this, this is what, what you need, and these are really, really cheap. If you buy them on eBay, you get them for about £20 or something, if not cheaper. And the other thing you need 
is a bicycle uh, inner tube. Use a mountain bike inner tube. That's uh, so it's easy to get over the over the manifolds and uh, a bit of uh, gaffer tape and some uh, some uh, clips, and you should be sorted. So. As you see on this one, this one has got the uh, rubber manifold end and what I found out, the best way to get this airtight is by using something that fits in the circumference of the manifold too, so you get purchase on, uh, on the clip that you put on. And um, this one in particular, uh, for the 30mm manifold, this is actually a uh, Lambretta lay shaft puller, but you can use, obviously you can use um, a socket or something like that in there just to keep it from uh, collapsing on itself and then I used uh, this one easy fit from Swalber but it's uh, it's basically just soapy water so I, I put some so let's see if I can get this to start running there you go so I just put that round here it's just so I can slide it on uh, the inlet manifold uh, a little bit easier and I've already put my my pipe clip on there and it's just a case of stretching stretching the hell out of the end here and putting it over there you go get as much as you can over there because it's got to be airtight now this is the sort of biggest disadvantage compared to using if you've got like bungs and stuff like that that you can buy. I see Daryl Taylor from Taylor Tuning. He makes a kit up with uh, various bungs and stuff like that that you can put in the end of the, of, the, of the manifold. But if you use the inner tube method like I do, then uh, you need to use some tricks to get it to uh, seal up properly. Now, the first trick is so that you don't cut a hole in the in the inner tube there, I actually cut a strip, cut a strip of gaffer tape, so just to protect the inner tube basically, and that means you can clamp down, clamp it down a little bit, a little bit tighter without having problems with that. Because the biggest problem with these is actually getting the the, the uh, inner tube to be airtight. Firstly. Let's have a look, so that should go over there like that. And do it nice and tight. And then we fit the hose clamp. Now I've seen some of the bungs and some of the some of the plates you can buy. Uh, from some of the from uh, obviously from uh, Taylor and some of the dealers. And so I tighten that down pretty pretty hard. Uh, the problem with those, I think, is um, you're just going to end up testing without the exhaust manifold. But the last, just as a little heads up and a little word of warning, uh, the last uh, five engines I've tested, uh, I found leaks on the exhaust manifold itself. So a lot of the dealers are sending those out and they're not airtight from the factory. So if you... Uh, if you just pressure test without the manifold and the exhaust stub, then it could be that either the manifold or the exhaust stub, that'll leak anyway. And uh, I think one of the most dangerous leaks, obviously apart from the head, is if you get a leak around the, the inlet manifold, because that can really mess around with your, uh, with your jetting. Another tip as well is if you, uh, if you when you buy your inner tube uh, and you use one of these eBay, spigorometers uh, use the race bike valves because that's that gives you a really nice fit over the valve you just take out the valve core and you just screw it on there so that that's a really good way of doing it so it, you know it's going to be airtight um, what I've done here is the same as I did on the inlet man uh, manifold manifold <laughs> I've just uh, pulled it over the exhaust stub and I've got a couple of rounds with the uh, gaffer tape and I've actually used two uh, clips on this uh, stub here because uh, these can be a bit of a bugger to, to get airtight. 
So then I'm uh, going to give it a bit of a pump up the volume. I have to make sure that's closed first. And you can have a look at... Normally I could I'd clip it so that you can see it, but I can hold it there. And uh, we just pump it up. Now, the other thing I've got, which I forgot to mention, I think I might have to uh, move you a little bit so that you can uh, see what I'm doing. Damn it, my tripod is in the, in the way. There we go. So, it, at, at first glance, it looks like it's pumping up pretty quickly here. And the main object of the game here is, uh, they say, you can see it's actually going down quite rapidly, so there's definitely an air leak here somewhere. Uh, that could be, the first thing I test is the actual, is the actual um, join on the speedometer ometer So I use, uh, it's just soapy water in a spray, spray jobby. And I'll spray around there just to make sure that it isn't leaking. It, you get it bubbles uh, you see it straight away that it, it'll get a lot of bubbles and already I can see a leak down there but we'll have a look at that afterwards but it's definitely not leaking it is not leaking around the exhaust manifold now I was pretty sure it wasn't going to leak around there because this this is one of the ones we tested last year and it was leaking around there but we we uh, delivered it into a local welder and he TIG welded it and pressure tested it for us. Um, so that one is airtight, but that is that is really, really common thing. I've seen that on, like I said, most of the engines that I've built. So the object of the game is 300 speedometer on this uh, meter here is about uh, six PSI. And that is about uh, the running or the max running pressure of, uh, of the cylinder there. But what I like to do is pump it up to around about 240 and that is around about 5 psi and that's more than enough. It's just if you go if you go to town on this thing, you can actually blow out seals, perfectly good seals and have to rebuild your engine. So I'll pump this up and I think I've already found the leak. I can see it down there and I'll have to, uh, that is definitely leaking like a very naughty boy. So a couple of areas uh, that uh, sort of want to watch is your head, obviously. Uh, the gasket on the head. I've seen them leak there. Uh, you also get them uh, leaking around the base gasket, something this one I really doubt he's doing. But you can see he's used that uh, red sort of uh, silicone sealant. I'm not too keen on that. I really, really prefer the... Uh, the, the grey type, I'll show you what, what it's called when I pick it up. But it's definitely not leaking there, but it's definitely leaking another place. So I normally spray that around all the way around. You can see if that's uh, tight. And another top tip, I just have to move the camera a little bit. Let's have a look if I can uh, come on Mr. Tripod. Uh, another one to watch is I've had a couple that have leaked through the seal on the back side of this. Um, I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna change the clutch. So I'll take that off for next time I, uh, I pressure test it. And another oddball, and what I'll do, I'll put a link at the end, at the, in the description on this video, uh, because I've got an Instagram film where I actually found a leak um, through the maghouse itself. Normally, yeah, you have to check uh, the studs that go through the maghouse and obviously the maghouse seal in the bottom here. I've seen a couple that have leaked there too. But that last one I had was a real freak of nature. It was actually leaking through the aluminium on the, on the maghouse there. So, I found the leak here and I'm going to point you down there if we'll see if we can see it. So, can you see that folks? Actually, I think he's been a very, very naughty boy because not only has he used uh, used that sealant that I really don't like, you know, the generic red one that smells like vinegar. I don't actually think he's got 
uh, gasket between the reed valve which is this plate you can see in between the manifold and the inlet here let's uh, give it another spray there it's definitely it's leaking on the bottom side of the on the bottom side of the reed valve there there it is so I think he's done what we call in Norway he's done a Spanish one and just uh, just use that silicone which is a bit of a shame but anyway we found that first leak there so what I'll do I'll uh, get him to order some gaskets and I'll uh, take that off again and uh, tighten it up and in the next video we will uh, see if I manage to get it uh, airtight so this is uh, this is the uh, the silicone uh, gasket I like to use. I was in, uh, obviously they actually recommend this when um, I built my Castle Ambretta engine. The uh, Castle Ambretta recommend this one, but the, the, by coincidence, I was actually at the uh, Ducati factory a couple of years ago and uh, was in the race department by special appointment. It was really, really cool. I was building the race engines and they used uh, this three bond, 1215. They used that one um, there. So it's like, if that's good enough for them, it's good enough for me. The cool thing about this one is it, it sort of stays put where you put it. And it's pretty easy to remove now you uh, when you take the, the engine apart again. Right, that's the end of this video. And uh, got a bit of a result, even though it's uh, it's always a shame when you have to mess around with those things. But it, it is, like I said, it's uh, imperative that these things are uh, airtight when you, uh, when you start up. Now, the next video, I will be fitting this, which is uh, a re-speed five plate clutch system that they sell with the uh, stronger springs because uh, his uh, standard clutch just isn't uh, up to the power, it's doing a lot of slippage. So I'll take out the clutch and do that and I'll also uh, see if I can uh, uh, fit some new gaskets in there and hopefully that should be a uh, job done. So if you like this video, give me a thumbs up and uh, subscribe and I'll uh, see you in the next one. ta Toll from Mississippi. It is fucking freezing. It's snowing outside. Let's see how that goes.